Welcome back, we'll be drawing a diagram of the right popliteal fossa, which is an important landmark behind the knee. So listen up, we're not talking about that knee or Disney, we're talking about the posterior side of the knee. Before we begin, grab a paper, a pencil, and some colored pencils. Let's start by labeling our medial side and our lateral side. First, we're drawing a diamond-shaped figure. This will represent the borders of the popliteal fossa. First, draw in a vertical line from the top of the diamond to the bottom. Now, draw another line here in the upper lateral border and draw it coming out of the border. Next, we'll draw a line medial to the first line and its tributary going out of the border. Now, we'll draw in the last line most medially. Lastly, we'll draw down four circles. By the way, yellow is nerve, blue is vein, red is artery, and green is lymph nodes. And if you don't know, now you know. Great job, it's pretty much complete now. Let's label. We'll use the mnemonic, serve, and, volley, next, ball. This mnemonic will cover the borders and the contents of the popliteal fossa. We'll introduce our diamond pop fossa again. We'll highlight all the first letters. First one, S, for serve, it's for semitendinosus and semimembranosus, S and S. The A, and, is for artery, and will be our most medial structure, popliteal artery. V for volley is for vein, representing popliteal vein, and the tributary, small saphenous vein. N, next, represents two nerves, tibial nerve and common peroneal nerve. B for ball represents our upper lateral border, the biceps femoris. These four green circles represents the popliteal lymph nodes. And finally, the lower two borders are our medial gastrocnemius and our lateral gastrocnemius. Now hang in there for some important information. The vessels are actually arranged according to depths. So most superficial we have the nerve, deeper is the vein, and deepest is the artery. Did you know that the popliteal pulse is actually a main pass point of the arteries, but because of the arrangement, it's hard to palpate it. The roof of the popliteal fossa is made up of the skin, then the superficial fascia, and then the deep fascia. Next is the floor of the popliteal fossa. First we have the popliteal surface of femur, then the oblique popliteal ligament, and the last one is the popliteus muscle. Let's get a little clinical. If you're not familiar with this image, it's because you haven't watched the clinical knee video yet. The most common issue is the Baker's cyst. A Baker's cyst refers to the swelling of the semimembranosus bursa, a fluid-filled sac found at the knee joint. Simply put, it is an outpouching of the synovial fluid and results because of time and does not require surgery. Also a common problem of the popliteal fossa is an appearance of a swelling or a mass. One possible cause of this is an aneurysm of the popliteal artery. This can compress the tibial nerve, producing sensory and motor deficits of the lower leg. We'll see this in the case if the common perineal nerve is damaged, which is a branch of the tibial nerve at the popliteal fossa. The common perineal nerve wraps around the head of the fibula, and if it is damaged, we find that the person cannot dorsiflex or do eversion of his foot. Patient also loses all sensation in his leg and foot, commonly known as foot drop. Are you learning something from our videos? Well then click the subscribe button to your right. We are releasing high yield lessons and ways for you to get ahead in class. Be sure to follow us on Instagram to take interactive quizzes and view your favorite diagrams. Nothing can stop you, but only if you believe in yourself. You got this.